when it comes to the implementation and management of social systems. The fulfillment of people's needs is an important consideration. The thing is, people don't always agree on what those needs are. So today we're going to be exploring Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We will be talking about different needs and how they can be met, and we'll also discuss whether Maslow's hierarchy is a useful tool in defining human need. So first off, what is Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory in psychology developed by the psychologist named Abraham Maslow in his 1943 paper, A Theory in Human Motivation. It describes human needs in terms of a hierarchically structured set of priorities for human fulfillment, and how humans will act in response to where they are on the hierarchy in terms of meeting their needs. As visualised on screen, Maslow's hierarchy is split up into five separate tiers. Further down the hierarchy are higher priority needs, and further up the hierarchy are more abstract and lower priority needs. On the bottom tier of the hierarchy, we have our physiological needs, things like food, water and shelter, things we need to sustain access to in order to survive. The next tier up represents our security needs. We are meeting our basic life support needs, but how exactly do we sustain them? In today's society, we have a model of labour for income, where people are paid money for a portion of their labour. Workers then use this money to pay for things like rent, the power bill, groceries, and so on. The second tier of the hierarchy is also concerned with protection. Part of meeting this need is having a home that protects you, your loved ones, and your belongings. Another thing that comes under the category of security needs is your personal health. Are you able to do the work needed to sustain yourself? not only as part of a job, but also as part of daily life in general. The third tier of Maslow's hierarchy is about social interaction and the people around you. Do you have friends, family, companions, partners, etc.? Although social interaction is not an immediate survival need, it is indeed an important part of maintaining our sanity and mental health. Many studies have shown the detrimental mental health effects of loneliness and isolation. It has been shown that there is a strong link between things like loneliness and mental conditions such as depression and social anxiety. One of the most extreme forms of social isolation is solitary confinement. There have been multiple case studies done showing the psychological effects of this practice. Without social interaction, we go insane. Without love, we grow lonely. Fulfilling our social needs is not as important as food or shelter, but it is still definitely a high priority. The next two tiers of the hierarchy are a little more abstract and rely a lot more on people's interpretation. Firstly, let's cover esteem needs. Esteem needs are things like respect, status and freedom. This tier of the hierarchy is concerned with how you value yourself and how you are valued by the people around you. It's also about your own personal beliefs and values. For example, liberty and autonomy are things that quite a lot of people value in their lives. At the individual level, everyone attains their esteem needs differently. Today, some people pursue fame, some people attain a skill that is valued by others, and then there are those who are just naturally likeable. Things like liberty and freedom depend on extra personal factors such as culture and social structures. It's something that's environmental and cannot realistically be attained through individual means. And lastly, we have self-actualization. The uppermost tier of the hierarchy is difficult to explain because it means different things to different people. All of the other tiers in the hierarchy kind of have a collective element to them, in that a society or a collective group can work together to attain those things, whereas self-actualization concerns the self and is much more personal. And essentially, what it means is fulfilling one's purpose. What that purpose is, is entirely up to the individual. Now that we understand the basics of Maslow's hierarchy, what can we draw from it? What Maslow is stating here is that needs are a hierarchy, and I happen to agree with him. Why is this? While it's possible to do things like make friends and get a job without eating for a few days, such a situation would be impractical and would be detrimental to your health. Many people look at Maslow's hierarchy and they think of each tier as being a strict precondition for each other tier, when in reality it's more of a set of priorities. 
For example, in order to focus on getting a job, you need to be well fed. Otherwise, you won't be able to concentrate as well. And if you get that job, but you're still struggling to keep a roof over your head, you're not really thinking about making friends or getting into a relationship, at least not as much. This is probably why today, third world countries are much less economically developed because people in those regions don't have easy access to the basic necessities of life and this diminishes their ambition to pursue other things. In many developed countries, poorer youth don't have access to higher education to better themselves because it is prohibitively expensive. As a result, many young people take on low-skill, dead-end jobs as a means of keeping above water. These people can't do things like fulfil their purpose because they're barely able to attain their basic needs through insecure employment. Someone may try to refute Maslow's hierarchy by claiming to be a successful musician who survives on soup and beans on toast, only to then start claiming that that's evidence against needs being hierarchical. This is an example of the starving artist argument. This is the argument that anyone can be successful in life, even if they have poor material conditions. This argument is quickly dispelled when you realise that the wealthiest in society have way more capital than the poorest, and so they can much more readily afford various means of advancing themselves. They can also afford to take more risks in order to further grow their fortunes. The rest of society often find it much harder to grow and climb the current social ladder because they don't have as much wealth, which also indicates that they're lower on Maslow's hierarchy, which means they can't afford as many opportunities to better themselves. The examples I have given here vindicate the idea that needs are hierarchical because it shows how people cannot really fulfil their abstract needs if their basic needs are not first adequately met. Now then, how useful is Maslow's hierarchy of needs when it is applied to resource-based economics? Well, firstly, it asserts that people's basic needs need to be taken care of in order for individuals and wider society to prosper. Resource-based economists recognise this, and so we advocate for a system that provides most of people's needs freely and equitably. When people no longer need to work in order to feed and house themselves, they can focus on other things, like spending time with family, studying, or even working on personal projects and hobbies. When everyone's basic needs are met, we can dedicate more time to things like the arts and sciences, and we can allow people to more easily do things like attain their esteem needs and fulfill their own individual purpose. In a more communal society, people will be more able to make friends and companions in a more pro-social environment. This would partially contribute towards maintaining a positive public mental health. To summarise, when people have abundant access to one thing, they are likely to seek other things up until the point where they self-actualise. This leads me on to my next point, which is that something resource-based economists could use Maslow's hierarchy to demonstrate is how human needs and wants are in fact not infinite. It is commonly assumed by standard economics that human wants can never be fulfilled because they are assumed infinite. Maslow's hierarchy of needs provides an alternative view to this by asserting that there are no greater desires than self-actualization, which is illustrated as the final tier of the hierarchy. One thing I am sceptical about with regards to Maslow's hierarchy is the lack of description concerning the degree at which needs are fulfilled. For example, do you have good quality housing? Do you eat good quality food? Do you have good friends. I could own a one bedroom apartment and write programs from a cheap laptop, but I couldn't do it as well as if I had, say, better hardware. Maslow's hierarchy also doesn't take into account things like the need to be active, which I'm not going to criticise Maslow for because the priority of that need is quite subjective. To conclude then, today we have explored Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We've looked at how the model applies to society today, some criticisms of Maslow's hierarchy, and we've also taken a look at how we can apply it to resource-based economies. I hope you have enjoyed this video, or it has at least been informative. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, then click the subscribe button down below. If you have something to say, leave it down in the comment section. Sharing this video on social media will help the channel grow and will help raise awareness of ideas such as resource-based economies. I've been Adam Jones and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.